get what you're worth, I go out and get what you're worth. I'ma show you how great I am. Is everybody ready to go? Let's proclaim the greatest radio show. Jim Sella and Johnny Parlay with the facts. So relax, grab a drink, then let's get back. Well, it was a semi-dominant performance, I think, for the Steelers tonight on Monday Night Football. I am your host, Jim Sella. You're listening to The Spread. Dash, what did you think about this game? Semi-dominant? Kind of dominant? Maybe for like three and a half minutes dominant? What did it look like? Well, I mean, a win's a win. So you definitely didn't take a step backwards this week. But I wouldn't go as far as to say dominant. I don't think they took a major step forward either. Yeah, listen, Houston is... uh... I don't know. They've won, what, three of their last, like, 16 games or something like that? They won two last year. Well, they're one in four in their last five games now after this loss. Well, then they won two last year, so they they won three games in two years so far, a year and a half. It's not like they're a great team, so to only beat them 30 to 23, it's not that much of a statement. But for three minutes, the team looked like the team of old. For three minutes. Turnovers, putting the ball in the end zone, Big Ben throwing the ball. It was awesome. Yeah, they scored 21 points on five offensive plays. And do you want to know when the last time that happened was? I do know when the last time that happened was, but I'll let you tell everybody. It's one of your favorite games of all time. It was the butt fumble game. Block the butt fumble game. When they score all those points because Sanchez kept turning it over? I have no clue what happened in that game. I just heard them say it on television, and I thought you would love it. Well, he obviously just dropped the ball out of his ass, and uh, the other team kept scoring. I'm pretty sure that's how it went. Well, anyway, this game, the Steelers, uh, they got out of it relatively unscathed. I guess no, because Beecham and Gilbert both got hurt, and that's two of your five starting offensive linemen. So although only two guys go down, it's two pretty important guys. Mike right. Adams played all right in, in place of um, Gilbert. I don't think J.J. Watt ran wild, brother. Ran wild? Ran in his wild. Game? I tell you what, J.J. Watt looked as good as advertised to me. Well, I understand that, but that's going to happen. I'm saying he didn't have like a five sack, three pick, two TD, like drop kick Ben Roethlisberger in the face. I'm talking one of those games like for the ages. Well, he, he had a J.J. Watt game. He just didn't have a game for the ages. And if you can hold him to that, I mean, you, you pretty much did your job with a star player. He's an MVP candidate at defensive end. Why are we acting like the Steelers' offense did something great here? They actually put one drive together on the Martavius Bryant 35-yard touchdown pass. Besides that, their touchdowns were two yards on two pl- – or it was a two-yard touchdown, and it was a two-play drive. I don't know, 11, 11 yards maybe, something like that. And then the other one was a one-play drive on the Antonio Brown touchdown pass to Lance Moore. So, I mean, that's really all they did. I didn't say the offense did great. I'm saying that uh, Mike Adams did a pretty good job against J.J. Watt in relief of Marcus Gilbert was the statement that I made. It's hard to say because the offense really still did nothing to me outside of those five plays, really. Right, but if J.J. Watt doesn't rip your quarterback's head off, if you keep him contained, you at least did your job. What the rest of the offense does has nothing to do with you containing Watt. I don't think Watt was contained at all. He had a sack, he had a fumble recovery, he did his job. Right, but that's what J.J. Watt does almost every week, no, man. he doesn't do it every week. He has more touchdowns than half, the, half our wide receivers. Well, he has four sacks in six weeks, so that is we less only than have, one a week. And we only have nine in seven weeks. Or Well, after this game, I think we have 11 well, in seven great, weeks. Well, that's great, but four in six weeks isn't something too special. You act like he does it every week. He obviously four in doesn't. Four six weeks. If he ends up with 15 sacks well, He has five and seven. Yeah, I think he had four and six coming into the game. Yeah, if he has 16 sacks and four picks and three force fights, he's going to win defensive MVP and league MVP. But the Steelers offense, you're right. They didn't do great. They had 328 yards total, maybe, the offense. Yeah, eh, only that, 76 eh. rushing, too. That's all I got for him. 
Yeah, that's pretty pathetic. Only 76 yards rushing. With Bell and Blunt, you really went into this year thinking they could run the ball, maybe not for huge yards, but at least consistently, really whenever they wanted to, almost at will, but not necessarily all the time. Well, I mean, Bell had 12 for 57, and he looked magnificent again. Yeah. But Blunt really did nothing. What he have, 7 for 9? Something terrible. Yeah, and I mean, when you lose two of your starting offensive linemen, you know your running game is going to suffer a little bit. And that's not an excuse. you got to step up and still play your game. But the Steelers' offense, they got a C, C grade. A maybe C-? C minus. Yeah, C minus, maybe. Ben Roethlisberger looked good. He looked all right. He wasn't terrible. He didn't do anything that great. He... They don't even give him the chance he to do hit more that Tav- great anymore. He hit Martavius Bryant on that deep patch was deep pass, which was very nice, but he also overthrew like four or five of them as well. You know, the stat I'm most impressed with for Ben is he averaged eight yards per attempt. And remember last week we were talking, you know, he needs to average big yards per attempt. He's not a five yards per play quarterback. Let him throw the ball downfield. Better things will start to happen. Brian, Brian had a big catch, 35 yards, right? Martavius Bryant. Well, yeah, the touchdown catch. Right. So, I mean, let him throw it, man. It happens. We got a guy that might actually be able to catch the ball in the end zone other than Brown. Yeah, he only hit like one of five of them, though. That He needs to hit on two or three of those, and then that number's going to go up even higher. Right, but you give him more chances, he's going to get more into a rhythm. We've seen him do it before. It's not like he's never done it. That's what he's best at, and you just got to let him get into that rhythm again. I tell you what, this game was a game of big chunks, really. There were... Arian Foster was breaking off big chunks of yardage early in the game. Later in the game, Andre Johnson was breaking off big chunks of yardage through the air. And the Steelers, Le'Veon Bell had at least three or four plays that were up around 20 or more yards. Yeah, Bell, uh, 57 yards rushing, 88 yards passing, eight catches. Is that a career high for him, I bet? I'm not really sure. I'm just guessing. It's, it's got to be close, if not the high. He's only a year and a half into his career. I'm not even quite sure. He uh, didn't get in the end zone on the ground again, which um, he needs to get in the end zone on the ground. I mean, yeah. it's been it's been a very long time now. Six games. It, it The only good thing you could say is he's catching a, a few passes and getting in there, but he's a running back. He shouldn't be having to catch touchdown passes to get in the end zone. The, the trick play, I know you really like that trick play in the red zone there. They definitely fooled the Texans, but I don't like running trick plays down in the red zone. You you risk giving up big yards and maybe taking yourself out of scoring range altogether. Well, uh, they should be able to hand the ball to Bell, go behind Pouncey and DeCastro, your two first-round picks, and get a touchdown when you're as close as they were to the end zone. They really should. Yeah, they should, but they came into this game struggling really, really bad in the red zone. So they needed to do whatever they could to get in. I do like trick plays, but now if you're a team that comes accustomed to running trick plays, you're not going to want to keep running them in the red zone. I mean, that that's pretty much the first trick play they really ran this season. So it, it, it caught them completely off guard. But speaking of Bell... He's the first player in team history to have a uh, 100-plus yards in the first seven games of the season. Yeah, I said earlier we were just casually talking, do you think he's the best back since Barry Foster? Do you think Bell is the best back maybe in team history? Because I, I know you said you like him better than Foster. I know you always hated Jerome Bettis. I so, hate Jerome uh, Bettis. Do you hate Franco and Rocky Blyer too? Well, I never said I hated Jerome Bettis, so I don't know where that came from. You just like to hate. Well, listen, you, if you've ever seen Ace Ventura and you know how he, he gets mad at Dan Marino? Yeah. yeah. Well, that's how much you hate Jerome Bettis. Okay. Well, sure. Whatever. So, so where were we going with this? I'm just making fun of you a little bit because I was bored. Le'Veon Bell, do you think he's the best back in Steelers history? Oh, well, you can Okay, I'm sorry. Let me rephrase the question. If he continues this pace through an eight-year career. Okay, yeah. If he continues this through eight years, then probably so, I would say. But right now, I mean, how are you going to say a guy that has a season and a half under his belt Yeah, is the best back in team history? I okay. mean, that's a little ridiculous. Well, I'm going to give him at least the best back since Jerome Bettis already. I think he's even better than Willie Parker already. Willie really was a one-trick pony. I know he got the job done. But I mean, just Willie's ran... career didn't last very long either, so right. sure, why not? Four years, yeah, three, four years. So 
since Jerome Bettis, uh, Bell's definitely the best back. I mean, he may be the best player on the offense right now. I know Antonio Brown's really good. Uh, when he made that cut and made the Texan defender miss and then just started up field at almost full speed instantly, that was crazy. I know my whole leg would have snapped in half. My shoulder probably would have broke just from the impact going through my body. That was crazy. Brown looked great again. Nine catches, 90 yards. He had that TD called back. He had a passing touchdown. Yeah, through touchdown. Lefty. And he, Who did not? He extended his 5-plus, 50-plus streak to 23 games now. Who cares about that record? I know. It is a stupid record, but this guy is doing it every week, obviously. All right. I hope he keeps doing it, but i just tired of hearing about this made-up record. I have a record. You know what I... The Steelers, Let me hear your record. The Steelers are 1-0 and on Monday nights in the month of October when I of wear my work shirt to watch the game. I mean, who, who cares? This dude just makes up stats, dude. I'm sure he didn't come out and say, hey, look at this stat I got. Who I else think has he did. this? He probably was looking he, it he's up. He's not working for whatever... Ne- the worldwide leader in sports, ESPN, who spits out garbage stats He wasn't getting all the time. enough attention on ESPN, so he just made up this stat and started tweeting it out under fake names just to get people to pay attention to him. Highly doubtful. I don't know, man. That's just my point of view. I mean, the big story of the game to me is not the offense. It's the defense. And They played I, well. Well, they started out the first drive of the game after the Steelers punted. The, Houston went down on 10 plays 94 yards and scored a touchdown. Foster had a 33-yard run during that drive. But, I mean, right there they were averaging 9.4 yards per play, and things were not looking good. They went down and kicked two field goals after that, so the Steelers were down 13 nothing, and I was everybody angry. was pretty much complaining. Yeah, I was at work, and I was listening to it on the radio, and I didn't really even want to do anything anymore except for maybe smash the radio. 13 nothing that quick. Every time I walked away, come back, we're losing again. I heard that Arian Foster had, I'm pretty sure he had over 70 yards in the first quarter or first drive maybe even. I don't even. know what it was. But Ridiculous, was man. How big you... chunk after big chunk. Yeah. That's all it was. And I mean, then they tightened it up. They got it together. Immediately. I mean, a three and out. Worlds forced that fumble at the three yard line, which pretty much turned everything around. And right after that, Kiesel had that interception on the first play. Yeah, Worlds and Mitchell both had forced fumbles. Worlds definitely had a bigger impact on the game. Not yeah. saying that Mitchell's didn't have an impact. Uh, Worlds just really seemed to get everybody so fired up. You just felt that. We've had those I mean, moments. Morta- the Mortavius Bryant touchdown is really what started it. But the defense had to get involved, and right. Worlds made the play happen. Right. When you make a play that quick after a touchdown like that and set your offense yeah. up that easy, that's the recipe for success that the Steelers used to have. We used to get turnovers. We used to give our offense a short field. Remember when Ben was throwing for high quarterback ratings early in his career? Dude, it was never for 350 yards. And I know the game's changed. I'm not saying we go back to running it 55 times or or 61% of the time or whatever the insane number was. 12 carries for Bell, though, in a game that you were pretty much up for. Is not enough. Yeah, that, that, that doesn't make sense to me. As far as passes and catches, he's got to have 15, 15 to 30 touches a game. For 30 a, touches is a lot, but it would be nice. I dude, mean, He's a premier back. Look what they're doing with DeMarco Murray down in Dallas. They're riding him. He has, He's averaging over 30 carries a game, not just 30 touches. And he's on pace to set records. You take advantage of these guys when they're young and when they have it. He's good. Give him the ball. Give him a chance to make a play. Our other wide receivers outside of Brown are not doing anything. So just give the the neck. I think the best player on our offense the ball and let him do something. Yeah, but really we need to find someone else. And it may be Martavius Bryant, but he still only had two catches for 40 yards. So someone At least needs... he caught one in the end zone. Yeah, I mean it was a big play and I do have hopes for him now. More than I have for Justin Brown and Wheaton. I mean Wheaton did nothing today. So the defense forced three turnovers today. Three that's, turnovers. I think that's more than all year long. I know that's not a Even real Even more I'm than that to me. I mean, the them. three turnovers are there. But they're, Houston had the ball on, over seven possessions. And our defense only let up three points. They had two three and outs in that time. The turnovers. So, I mean, in those seven possessions, they just took over the game. And that's really why we won. 
They stepped up, man. The Can defense they stepped up on Monday night. Though. I mean, you could say they're bipolar. Some games they do this, some games they don't. But, I mean, they don't do it a lot more than they do so far this season. Let's hope this is a stepping stone and they can start doing this more consistently now. Well, we're going to find out if they can do this more consistently because we got the best offense in the league coming to town next week with Indianapolis and Andrew Luck. He's on fire. They're on fire. They're 5-0 and in their last five games. Luck's leading the charge. He throws for big yards for a lot of touchdowns. He's not afraid to make any throw, make any play with his legs, whatever it takes. This guy is my MVP into the season. He's going to give the Steelers defense a huge test next week. Yeah, it's going to be uh, an extremely tough game for the Steelers, but that's why this game was so important. Now they're not three and four; instead, they're four and three. Right. And it now, if they the do lose off. this game in Indy, it's not the end of the world because if you go into that game three and four, and isn't it at home? It's at home, but we're gonna have to. Say, well, I guess you'll have to listen later in the week what we predict, but you can make your own prediction on what you think is gonna happen right. in that game, and you don't want to go. Well, we got Out Baltimore. of that game, three and five. Yeah, because we have Baltimore coming up the week after that, and you don't want to end up being three and six. Listen, if we could beat Indy or Baltimore here, you know, one of the next two games, we're in pretty good shape to make a run at this division. And I'm not saying the Steelers are Super Bowl contenders by any means because they need to tighten the ship up. They need to get some things going. But all you got to do is make it, and you still got a lot of games left. So if you can make it, you got a chance. Before that, I got to see this defense do it consistently. Oh, they, they definitely. stopped a and bad the quarterback. Get more consistent. Houston's not a terrible offense, but when you stop yeah, a Fitzpatrick's garbage, man. Exactly. You could say it. He's just garbage. And I, I need to see more out of this offense show. for sure. Bleep you, Fitzpatrick. Five plays from the offense, three touchdowns in that span or whatever. I mean, I'm not. I'm not at least, sold you've got to give it to them. That. At least they punched it in the end zone and they didn't kick field goals. Because in our Steeler history, we've seen things go the other way around where they've gotten three field goals there and let a team come back on them and beat them. At, you know? Yeah, their, so, touch, their red zone touchdown percent, percentage skyrocketed. Or, I wouldn't say it skyrocketed. <laughs> well, for because, how bad they were. I mean, they only scored two touchdowns in the red zone, but I mean, it did go up. So I they, think they only have scored improved. Like four or five all year before that. So Yeah. I mean, that's almost a literal stat. That's it, that's how bad we've been in the red zone. What other stats do we have here? That was their 16th straight home win on Monday night. Yeah, the Steelers killed on Monday night. The last team to beat them was the Giants in 1991. Uh, I was only nine years old, probably only eight years old, actually, when that happened. So the Steelers come up big on Monday night at home. Ben, I think this win takes him to 6-0 and on Monday nights at home. So I, I wish they would just schedule every Monday night game at home. What do you think? If they do that, we could go 16-0. Uh, and 0. Well, the spread got to get bigger, and then we got to call out other teams and say they can't beat the Steelers on Monday night, so they want the Steelers to schedule more Monday night games so yeah. they can try to knock them off. That's it. Another record, uh, the Steelers were the first team to score. Well, I don't know if you want to call it a record, but they were the first team to score 24 points in three minutes since 2002. The Seahawks did it. That's a span of... 3,119 games, if my math is correct. <laughs> if your math is correct. That's my math, If your man. eyes are correct. I did the math, homie. All right, well, our players of the game this week, offensively, we're going to give it to Le'Veon Bell. Uh, Le'Veon Bell proved again why we took him in the first round. Yeah, 20 touches. He had 145 yards total. One he had receiving. a touchdown. Yeah, that was a nice catch, too. Ben threw that to the outside where he needed to, but Bell almost went too far inside, and he, he made a nice adjustment to turn his body, and he caught that all hands, and Ben throws the ball pretty hard. Antonio Brown had a great game, too, but Le'Veon Bell showed how good he is. Do you see how shifty he is out yeah. there? I, I, he moves between the, the defensive line like I moved in the ball pit when I was a little kid, man. He goes right through it to the other side. And defensively, I mean, they played a pretty good game all around after the quick 13-0 start. But after that Martavius Bryant 35-yard touchdown, and then Worlds comes and forces that fumble right away, the yeah, momentum completely shifted to the Steelers. And I'd have to say Worlds would be the MVP on the defensive side just, just for the momentum factor right there. Yeah, the Bryant touchdown was big for the offense. I think the world's the world's forced fumble was even bigger for the defense. 
you know, the offense is supposed to score touchdowns, and I know your defense is supposed to force fumbles and get turnovers, but the Steelers' defense hasn't done it in almost three years. So to start a frenzy like that for this defense, uh, that was huge. It got the offense pumped up. We haven't given them a short field all year long. It just got, you could feel that energy from the sideline of the Steelers. You could see it out there. Nobody was sitting down. They were all up cheering for each other. So I definitely will agree. World should get defensive player of the week for week seven. So a 30 to 23 home win on Monday night for the Pittsburgh Steelers. They are four and three now, and they are Indy will come to Pittsburgh next Sunday. Andrew Luck's coming to town, buddy. He's my man. I've been uh, betting on them all year long. I've been picking them all year long. I've been riding them. And any way I can pick Indy and win a whole lot, that's what I'm trying to do. I don't think I could do it this week. I, I, I can't. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to pick them and lose. Well, I'd probably win. I don't know. Who knows? Well, you got a few days to decide, so we'll yeah. see. Hey, if the Steelers' defense shows up the way it did this week, it won't be such an easy task for luck. Uh, big Ben always comes up big in big games. This is another big game. Is it Sunday night? No, it's a 425 start. As of right now, I think that they're allowed to change them at any given time nowadays. I don't know if Flex starts week one anymore or week three or week 11. I don't know. This TV deal is more complicated than the calculus I took in college. Calculus, huh? I took that in seventh grade. Seventh grade. You still thought girls had cooties in seventh grade. I don't want to even hear nothing from you. It was an impressive victory by the Steelers. 30-23. Uh, to 23. Colts coming to town this week. Another big test. Steelers defense needs to show up. Steelers offense needs to get more consistent. Uh, tune in next week to hear our pick for that game. I want to thank everybody for listening to the spread. Thanks, Dash, for sitting here. Uh, I know it's late, so it's getting a little rough. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter at bet underscore the spread. Check out our Facebook page. Check out our YouTube channel. We're going to be trying to break into the iTunes, so as soon as we get that done, we'll be letting everybody know. Uh, Dash, thanks for sitting here, man. Yep, good, no problem. Good Steeler victory. Go Steelers. Solid victory. Yeah, go Steelers. And, and thanks, everyone, for listening. Good night. Good work.